Welcome back everyone to another installment of your weekly top 10. These are the hottest selling cards in Magic the Gathering this week from May 18th to the 24th of 2024. Now what we have in store for you is exactly as I expected. But to find out, you've got to stick around just a little while longer. Let's get this party started everyone. MTG Moxman here. Welcome back everyone to your weekly installment of the top 10. Now a reminder if you enjoyed today's content don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notification bell because we got new stuff coming at you every single day. And of course don't forget you can also use my TCG player affiliate link. By using that link you're helping the whole channel as we get prizes with those little bits of money that come in from that link. Alright guys we're starting out at number 10. And of course, this is Entis Restoration coming to you from Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle-Earth, with 920 sales. It's only $1,380 in sales volume. Why is this card even here? Why am I even talking about it? And why did it make the top 10? Well, after last week's giant TCG player blowout, it looks like everyone kind of like spent the load. They got no money left and they're buying a lot of different cards of much lower volume and lower value cards that maybe they've always wanted to pick up. Or the fact that we have a whole bunch of cards that would never normally be here, no matter how you want to slice this pie. It's definitely a different market this week, and that's really because of what happened on that big sale. That big sale got a lot of people on the FOMO train, and now people are just reeling from how much money they spent buying a lot of these cards, particularly reserve list cards. Now, of course, these commander players love their cards, though. Entish Restoration, of course, is one of them. But we also have here is Varaska the Silencer. Now, this card comes in with 1,230 sales, but you'll notice the sales volume is next to nothing. Now let's be honest guys, for players who've been around the block on this channel for a while, the pre-order season for this card, as well as the first week or two, saw this at a much higher price tag. And now that it's settled in, this is one of the cards that kind of fell down fairly quickly. Far more than we've expected or that we've witnessed in the last few months. But this is one of them. So Veraska here has Death Touch. It's a 3 casting cost 3-3. Three, three, and it says whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay 1. If you do, return that card to the battlefield tapped under your control. It's a treasure artifact with tap and sacrifice this artifact to gain one mana of any color. And of course it loses all other card types. So basically it's a little mana stone for that one time. But it's interesting to see that although that card has a homing commander, the price is not holding at all. Okay, it's still a great card though. I mean it's a great pickup at that price tag. Now our next card is the Great Train Heist. Another card from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. It's $2.50. Only 1400 sales. I mean, the sales have really stopped this week. It's not a joke. They just stopped. Now, it still has $3,515 in total sales volume. But the Great Train Heist, again, is one of those cards. A few days in, you'd think it was going to hold up. Players use it all the time, but it's just not getting the gameplay. I mean, taking a look at its spree ability, the plus two and one red on tap all creatures, you get an additional combat phase. Another plus two, they get plus one, plus zero, and first strike. And of course, just a red, choose target opponent. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to that player, you get to create a tapped treasure token, okay? This is really insane to think that the card is not worth more than it is, but it's great for players who are still using this card, and it could really rebound, so pay attention to it, guys. $2.50 is mega cheap for the Great Train Heist. Now, our next card. <laughs> Here's where we go back to Universes Beyond. We are here at Warhammer 40k, The Lost and the Damned. 1620 sales. This one at $2.99 comes in at $4,843.80. There's a little bit of a, an actual volume here. You're like, oh, it's less than 5000 bucks, but it's not horrible. So why is this card going up? What is going on for this enchantment that has players kind of talking about it? It says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control from anywhere other than your hand, or you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you get to create this 3-3 red spawn token. Think of all the cards right now. 
Think about that uh, long strider lookout and stuff that let you get these lands and things you can cash from your graveyards. There's all these ways now of just punctuating all kinds of these crazy 3-3 red spawn tokens. All this token generation, it's making you just realize how big and insane people's armies are going to be. And this card is super cheap still. So way to go for those people who recognize that and grabbed a copy. Not to mention, here is the Claim Jumper, a card that of course will work with this. 2,045 sales. It's only... 1840 bucks because it's only a 90 cent card i love the card i did order for um although it hasn't worked out for me playing arena and my standard deck that i'm trying to work with this is not having any legs it doesn't hop around quick enough and it does just die i, I gotta admit it it isn't working but it doesn't mean i'm not gonna try it doesn't mean i don't think this card has somewhere to go for a one white two generic this rabbit mercenary with vigilance says when the claim jumper enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you get to search your library for a planes card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Interesting, you didn't cast it. And then if an opponent controls more lands than you, you repeat the process. So it's great to get later on, or if you just don't have enough land and your opponent gets ahead of you, it lets you play catch up. Now our next card, number five, is the Nerd Rage. I love it, man. Revenge of the Nerds. But of course, it's not 1984, and these 2,200 sales definitely add up to something because that's $8,800 in sales volume. And again, we're looking at Fallout here, but this enchantment offers a little bit more that players have been looking for. Let's not forget, it's one blue and two generic to cast Nerd Rage. So when you're looking at this enchantment aura and it says Enchant Creature, then it says when Nerd Rage enters the battlefield... You draw two cards. That's kind of awesome already. Enchanted Creature says you have no maximum hand size. And whenever this creature attacks, if you have 10 or more cards in your hand, this thing gets plus 10, plus 10. That is amazing. This nerd is ready for action, and I totally understand why. Guys, this is a great card, and it's very inexpensive. So yes, I would buy four and just call it a day. Now let's not forget that Modern Horizons 3 is going to have an impact on what's going on in the secondary market, and Eldrazi Temple makes perfect sense. 2,460 sales, that's $22,115.40. This is something we're used to seeing. Now at $8.99, this card is not overly expensive, but if you look at the bell curve of how quick this thing is shooting up on like a, not a 90 degree, but we'll say like an 80 degree angle. This thing's just going up right now with people paying attention to the card and wanting to get copies. Now it's a land, and of course it adds for one colorless or two colorless if you're spending it on Eldrazi spells. It makes perfect sense, guys. And of course the copy I'm showing you is from Rise of the Eldrazi. Cards like this, anywhere around the $10 mark, I still think it's a great bargain for the value you'll get out of this card. And building commander decks with Eldrazi is all the rage right now. So paying attention to that and recognizing what you're going to be facing on the battlefield against your friends may help you out a little bit. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our next card because these things are interesting. Pick your poison is still moving up the ranks again on the top 10. This thing was at number eight or nine last week. It's moved all the way up to number three, 2,912 sales, which is $6,173. $3.44. Now, Pick Your Poison is one of those cards that everyone's using. I'm seeing it all the time in Arena. I'm seeing it locally at my store when I'm playing against people. And yes, you have to be prepared on both sides and plan your strategy. And yes, I've lost more than one slick shot, sure shot to that beast of a card because it offers them so many things because you are picking your poison with it. But it's a great card. A sorcery for one that says choose one. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact. Each opponent either sacrifices an enchantment or each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. And because it says each opponent, of course, this is finding a home in commander. Let's not lie to ourselves, guys. And somebody's still buying around 50 copies a week. Pay attention to that, okay? It will run out sooner or later. Now, our next card. The Free Strider is back again. Not number one this week, but coming in still close enough at number two. With 2,998 sales, that's $16,069.28. Overall, the card is still going up in value. It's a glide. It's kind of been up and down a little bit this week. But knowing this card and knowing what players are doing with it lets you recognize the future potential of cards like this. So let's take a closer look. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. 1 green, 2 generic. It's a human rogue with reach. And it says whenever you commit a crime, look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and put the rest on the bottom. Which of course works with the Warhammer 40k card we saw. So does the Claim Jumper. You can see how people could blend decks like this to get a whole bunch of token generation going. But not only that... This thing also just, it, it lets you get land. It lets you thin your deck in another way that people may not be ready for. It's a great card. Now, number one this week. 
Now, Lava Spur boots are off, okay? It didn't even make the list this week. The sales were so low. This is Sadistic Glee. Didn't even know this card was a thing until I started counting and it came across the table. So, 3421 sales. That's $2,257.86. So, what are we getting? How are we spending our money on a card like this? And why do we even want to buy? Actually, the, the name is kind of cool. I got to be honest. Make sure. It, this is definitely an old school card. When you're looking at Tempest like this, and by the way, it has a reprint already. It was years later, but it does have a reprint. This thing says Enchant Creature. Whenever any creature is put into a graveyard from play, put a plus one, plus one counter on Enchanted Creature. So, this is interesting, okay? Not only are you getting the plus one, plus one, but you could be sacrificing Eldrazi tokens. You can be all kinds of crazy stuff to get your mana going. But every time you're doing it, you're pumping up this guy and making him bigger and bigger. This is a great finale card, which means you're going to go out there. You're going to beat people down with this thing. And what I mean by a beatdown is the idea that Sadistic, when it comes into play and you sack creatures, if you have all kinds of these Eldrazi Scion tokens and you've made copies of those copies, you have 10 or 20 of them in play, 30, 40 of them, and you copy them all again, now you have 80, and you put out a card, and you put Sadistic Ritual on that card, you sack all those tokens, you have this big, huge mana rush, but your creature is also going to get plus 20, plus 20, plus 30, plus 30, plus 100, plus 100. Who knows? You give it double strike, add a couple of extra attack phases in there with all these new red generic cards that can just give you the extra attacks, and you've got a beast that is unstoppable. Add in a little bit of menace, and before you know it, your deck is going to just be singing for you. And a lot of players recognize that Sadistically is an amazing card, and they took the opportunity to purchase it. And of course, at 60 cents, it costs next to nothing to get the card. But either way, the sales overall are lower than we've seen in previous weeks. The TCG player sale definitely took the wind out of the sales of a lot of wallets. We'll probably have to wait a few weeks for this thing to recuperate, or we're going to have to wait and see if there's any real killer cards that come up with Modern Horizons 3. I didn't really comment a lot on the spoiler season this year. Um, the cards that have been coming out have not drawn enough attention to make the Mox Man interested. It's not that they're not good cards, it's just not enough to make me have to research it all. So I apologize for those who asked. I'm not going to do anything unless some cool card comes along that really draws my attention. Either way, thanks again for being here on the channel. Thanks for stopping by for another Top 10 video. Don't forget, tomorrow is the Reserve List Top 10. And you never know, some cool cards may be making it onto the list this week. Some you wouldn't have expected. Thanks again for hanging out. Shop smart, shop S smart, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Where is my coffee? Come on, you're, you're buying some Eldrazi. You know you are. Don't, don't lie. You know you're the one buying some of those cards. I know you are. Wait, we're at the end credits? We're past that point? Oh, guys, these are, these are the credits. This is the time we talk about the patrons, the, the YouTube membership members, the ones who actually make it happen on this channel. Without their support, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. We'd be doing something else, and it wouldn't be this. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks for being patrons. Thanks for being there for the Mox Man. Okay, here we are. Whew, guys, sales were low. Now, if you're here at this end of the part of the video, the end of the part of the video, my words aren't coming out right, but that's beside the point. If you're here at the end, here at the Ramble Jamble, I told everyone last week the sales were going to drop off like a stone. And they really did. There's no $70,000, $80,000 sales target cards right now. People blew their wallets. They went for some good deals on TCG Player. They took the kickback. They got the credit card points. And they just, mwah, they were happy. But you can't do that every day. And that really shows when you see a video like this and you see the sales volumes overall so much lower than where they've been. But the cards selling are these ancillary cards that people want to build into their decks. They want to buy it and get it out of the way. And a few of these cards may actually rebound and be something. Entis Restoration, being as cheap as it is, is a great pickup right now. A lot of these cards are perfectly feasible, amazing cards to grab because they have viability inside your deck. So congratulations to those people buying them. Of course, make sure you're using my link. And you know what? We'll see each other soon. So uh, I'm going to walk left again? I don't know. I don't know. It's early in the morning. It's 3.40.